I know, man, I blew that last one. One of the things we rarely think about when putting together or buying a boat, especially a center console, is spray rails. Over the course of my career, I've made a lot of decisions, some good, some not so good. Fortunately, when I added these 13 years ago, it made all the difference from feeling like you're in one of these to staying dry and comfortable. If you have a big bow center console like mine, you need them. We live in what seems like one of the windiest places on the East Coast. Spray rails have one simple job, to deflect the water from coming up the side of your bow and midships and blowing over the side and soaking you. When I first bought my rig, I didn't have them. But after getting soaked while running her from the tower, and I knew my crew may act like good sports, but there was no way they could enjoy getting hit in the face with gallons of water. My dock partner turned me on to a product called Smart Rails from Integrity Marine Corporation. Find them on the internet. It may be the only place you find them because I couldn't find them on the socials and I couldn't find a product video on YouTube. I know, man, hard to believe nowadays. And this shit you gotta know, my misguided partner, Captain Dave Lusk of Salt Minded Fishing and I are going to install a couple of spray rails on his newer but wet rig at the Salt Minded. Piece of cake. The first thing to do is decide where to put them. So get in your boat, go for a ride, look over the side of your bow and determine where the water is coming up. This is where you want to place your rails to know where to push down the splash. Needless to say, if you look at the video, Dave took care of this before I got there. Dave measured where he wanted to place them, then ran some painter's tape as a mock-up. This is the hardest part. And if a guy with limited spatial reasoning like myself can figure this out, so can you. So go ahead and frame out your mock-up, scuff your hull where you do it with 220 grit. Then go ahead and after you're done scuffing, wipe it with denatured alcohol or mineral spirits. Give it a few minutes to dry. And then if you haven't read the directions, now would be a good time to do so. Just to make sure you know what you're doing. This is a two person job. One guy holds the rails in place while the other person starts pulling the adhesive back and off of the 3M strip. This is the part where you make sure everything is where you need it to be. This is your last chance to get your rails in the right spot. The rails are seven and a half feet long and require two people to hold them in place to affix them to the side of your hole. They're like wet noodles, so you can't do it by yourself. The adhesive is strong. It will hold your rail in place while you go get your glue kit ready that came with the rails. The only thing not provided for the next step is a caulk gun and you will need one. Read the directions. You only have about 15 minutes before the glue starts to kick off. I need to emphasize this. The glue that is used with these rails is very strong. Strong enough that there isn't a second chance if you put your rails on crooked. If I didn't mention it already, two person job. While Dave was squeezing the glue into the gaps at the top and the bottom of the rails, I was gently pulling up or pulling down so he could get the tip of the syringe into the crack. It's not very hard, but don't be stingy with the glue. Just don't get it on your fingers. Pretty sure your skin will come off as well. And walk around and look, hell yeah, your rails are fixed. Admire your work. High five your helper. You are a freaking craftsman. You and your passengers are going to be dry and happy. And this, my brothers, is shit you got to know.